Are you coming up here to Alaska on a cruise? Are you gonna stop at Icy Strait Point? If so, this video's for you. I've got a walking tour with a whole bunch of tips and tricks right after this. For those of you that are new to this channel, my name is Sean. My wife Kat and I have traveled all over the world and have been doing so for the past 15 years. Recently, we started posting our adventures on YouTube. So if you like long form travel videos, tours, or in-depth videos like this, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out. So in this video, we're gonna take a look around Icy Strait Point, which was a very pleasant surprise for me. Welcome to Icy Strait Point. This port is located just outside the town of Huna in Southeast Alaska's scenic Inside Passage. Once a thriving salmon cannery in the early 20th century, this port was transformed by the Huna Totem Corporation into a cruise port in 2004. When your ship first arrives at Icy Strait Point, it will either dock at Ocean Landing or Wilderness Landing. Those are the only two docks available at Icy Strait Point. If you happen to be a ship that doesn't get one of these docks, you will be tendering ashore. And if that's the case, your tenders will arrive at the Wilderness Landing. In between the two docks is a gondola that travels from one dock area to the other and this is called the transportation gondola and it is absolutely free. You can hop on and off it as much as you want. There are walking paths between the two docks, however, they have been closed at various times due to bear sightings, so don't assume that they will be open when you arrive. The main area of Icy Strait Point is over by the ocean landing. So chances are you will spend most of your time over there. However, the gondola that goes to the top of Sky Peak, which is the sky glider, that does leave out of the wilderness landing area. And it is not free. You have to either pay for it to go up or you have to be on one of the excursions that is on top of Sky Peak. If your ship happens to arrive at Ocean Landing, the very first building you will walk through is the Adventure Center. The Adventure Center has the main coffee shop in it. There is another one in with the shops in the museum, but this is by far the biggest one. This is also where you will meet up with a lot of your excursion tours. Stepping outside the Adventure Center is the entrance to the transporter gondola. This will take you over to the other dock and also to the gondola that goes up to the top of the mountain. Here you will find one of three major restaurants, the first being the Duck Point Smokehouse. Uh, this smokehouse, is, I've heard, is pretty good. Uh, there are no smoked fish, however. That was kind of the biggest complaint that I heard. There's also a set of restrooms right around in this area. One of the nice things that Icy Strait Point does is there are fire pits everywhere, as you can see right here. However, it is not lit yet. But throughout the day, all these fires, actually it is lit, it's smoking. Throughout the day, all these fires are lit and you can simply sit around them to warm up. There are two paths to get uh, across this section of Icy Strait Point. This is the boardwalk style one that you can get to the Orca sculpture from. And it has some pretty nice views up here. And if you don't feel like walking down along the water, this is obviously the way to go. Uh, there's a plaque on the sculpture explaining the history of it. On the left here, we have some private residence. This is where some of the people that uh, work here live. Uh, 
There are nice, these nice little houses along the left side and also a cemetery, a very old cemetery is up on the left as well. You can see off to the right, the people walking along the shore. That is the other path, the beach path to get back to the docks. And this is the Cookhouse restaurant. This is the second of the three major restaurants where you can eat when you're in Icy Straight Point. Uh, this one is a little bit bigger with regards to seating and so on. Uh, they also feature a, uh, two different forms of fish and chips. And again, I've heard nothing but good comments from other passengers about this restaurant. We did not eat at either of these two. We ate at the one that's going to be coming up next. But as you can see, there's a halibut and chips, and there's just a plain old fish and chips. But they have burgers and soups and so on as well. Uh, up ahead are the shops and the museum. There are a whole bunch of shops here. They're all connected basically in these, this big huge building that's up in front of us as well as a uh, small museum but it's interesting there's all sorts of fun facts they have these little panels that ask questions and you open the panels and there's all this information about Alaska and salmon and all that that uh, I never knew Remember, this used to be a salmon cannery, so that's kind of what the museum focuses on. There's also, as you can see, we're passing right now, there's maps everywhere, so you'll never get lost in this place. But yeah, along the side, see those little white panels with question marks on them? Those open, they have like little trivia inside. And this is the shopping. Uh, this is just one section. And I have to say, the quality of the products here is way above what you would normally find. I mean, the shirts are high quality. The, the mugs and all that are high quality. They're not the cheapo stuff that you find in a lot of cruise boards. This is the area where they showed how they clean the salmon. Obviously, those are fake, uh, but they have a whole little, in this section, little museum thing that shows how they actually took the salmon from catching them and put them in cans and that's all off on the left hand side right here it's the machinery that actually canned the salmon and it goes into detail there's signs that talk about what each piece of equipment is used for but uh, i thought it was kind of fascinating and the fact that it still boggles my mind that machines can do something like that and stick salmon into cans all by themselves You also find some more uh, items to purchase over here with some more exhibits as well. But if you walk out this door, you'll come to the third and final major restaurant in Icy Straight Point, which is the Crab House. And that is where Kat and I had lunch. And it was fantastic. It's all about crab at the Crab House. We got a whole bunch of different things i basically ordered some of everything off the menu from the reindeer chili which tasted like regular chili the salmon chowder that was very good the dungeness crab and then the snow crab and both were extremely fresh they didn't have a seafoody taste at all very very good This is where you find the other set of restrooms off to the back of the museum and stores here. Also, there's a donut shop. If you're on a kayaking excursion, this is over here is where you will find the kayak center. I saw a lot of people going in and out of that throughout the entire day. And also, if you want to walk into the town of Huna, as you can see right above those kayakers, there's actually a road and a walking path. So this is where you start the path into Huna. It is one and a half miles, and it takes about a half an hour to walk it. It is a very nice path. It is not on the road. It's actually a paved path that goes along the water and parallels the road. 
There are signs that talk about the various forms of wildlife and everything. It's an amazing walk. Now we're on the other side of the building. There's more stores over here. This tends to be more of the more expensive stuff like jewelry and sculptures and so on. Uh, there's a few things to look at museum wise, like for example, this Jeep here, but it's mostly just shopping on this side. And to get back, we're gonna walk down the uh, beach path this time. Now the beach path, this is interesting. Icy Strait Point actually gets two high tides and two low tides a day. Uh, and the tides are pretty big. So when we were there, I think it was around 15 feet difference between high and low tide. Now this video was actually filmed in the afternoon, the middle to late afternoon. Oh, by the way, there's tons and tons of berries that you can eat. But unless you know what you're picking, please do not eat them because I did see uh, a couple poisonous berries along these different walking paths, but there are several that you can eat. Anyway, the tides are about 13 to 15 feet when we were, when we were in Icy Strait Point. And when we first got off the ship in the morning, uh, the water was substantially lower than it is now. You could see starfish and Cat actually found some money on the beach. Uh, it was really nice. So this is just the same, getting back the same way, just basically down by the water. And as I said, if you come during low tide, you can walk way out on the beach. And that's the ship that we came on, the Radiance of the Seas. It went from Vancouver all the way up to Seward, Alaska, and which is where we started a two and a half week long uh, Alaskan adventure, basically. All right, so let's hop on the transporter gondola and head on over to the other dock. By the way, in front of us, that's where the zip riders end, if you end up doing that. Okay, so this is the transporter gondola. It's going to obviously be sped up, but underneath it, you can see there's all these ropes courses. None of those were open when we were there due to bear sightings. I'm guessing because that's why the trails were closed, but I didn't see anyone on on the ropes courses at all now on this dock There's pretty much nothing over here other than The obviously the other dock for the other ships. Uh, this is wilderness landing by the way But there's also the area where you check in for the zip rider and it's the world's longest uh, zip line basically it goes uh, 65 miles an hour and drops whatever that sign said I think uh, 1600 feet or something like this anyway I we cat and I are in this gondola going up to the top of the mountain and I wasn't thinking anything of it and I finally looked over at cat and she was not doing well with it so if you're afraid of heights this is probably something you shouldn't do because this it's pretty high up there and anyway when you get to the top there's a few overlooks to look down in your cruise ships and so on but also there's really not much up here to do there are walking paths and there's some excursions up here but the walking paths again were closed due to bear sightings and we took the zip riders down the mountain and those are people on the zip rider going down and this is them hitting um, the springs at the bottom. I have to say, going 65 miles an hour, you're not going that fast at this point, but it's pretty fast. When you hit those springs, it's uh, you slow down pretty quickly. Anyway, this is the final walk uh, of this tour back to our cruise ship. On the way back, I just had to stop at a huckleberry bush and have some huckleberries again. Do not just randomly go pick berries here unless you know what it is you're picking and eating. Because if you do, you can get very sick. There you go. There's the warning. That was Icy Straight Point. I hope you enjoyed this tour. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. And this is a link to us riding the Zip Rider. Check it out. See you next time.